last week on a Sunday we had a request from a, a farmer to run a, a manure hose over Noble Avenue so that they could pump manure into their field and inject it with their injecting equipment. Uh, that's a rare request that we've maybe seen one other time that I know of and that last time we had done that because it was short notice we offered them to come pick up barricades from the shop and erect them themselves to close the road temporarily so that they could inject their manure and cross the road without beating up the gravel roads with the big tanker wagons. The same request, or a similar request came last Sunday, not, not last Sunday, the Sunday prior, and they wanted to do it on, on Monday and uh, providing past practices of what we've done, we've allowed that. We were aware they were going to use the signs and erect them. They were going to run a hose across the road for what they said was two to three hours. So we granted permission for them to come get signs and erect signs for that temporary closure. And as it turned out, it took a little bit longer because it was a little colder. I think Monday, I don't know why Monday didn't work for them, but it ended up being Tuesday. And Tuesday their stuff had froze up, so it took them a little bit longer to do. So... Um, we can have that discussion on, on maybe providing a policy. What we told the individuals were this one time, but after that, we need you guys to install some sort of a, a culvert under the road if you want to continue to cross the road with a sewer pipe with the manure pipe. Typically, and I've sent a broadcast email out to all the other county engineers, and a lot of the other county engineers have done the same thing with a, a request like that if you know you kind of caught blindsided with it um, they've allowed them to temporarily close the road for a while and then they say just this one time and next time at your expense you will put something under the road to push that pipe through so we don't have to close the road anymore that's what happened last week um, and they were they were still working after dark they got to the dark and I didn't realize they had hadn't shut down yet and that's when I got the phone call from you and that's when we said pull the plug now they only said they had another half an hour but we didn't allow it there weren't any flashers on the barricades and it was getting dark what we you know the reasoning behind it was simple you know they could have taken load after load on a four axle manure wagon and destroyed the road versus closing the road down for what we thought was going to be three hours and we saved ourselves <coughs> time and effort by not having to reblade the road or put rock down to... First of all, they can't go and destroy the road. We've got a road protection ordinance in this county that they will pay the damages on that road. Understandably so. We get a lot of... Really? Implement a husbandry really? doesn't count. Doesn't count. <laughs> so, <laughs> I guess the they reasoning behind... The way it is then when they're done. The reasoning behind it was, you know, we kind of thought we could save ourselves having to reblade the road and maybe have to put rock down after all the traffic was going on the gravel road. Um, so they do, they do uh, tear up the roads quite well. I like we've seen a lot of it. so Saw a lot of it in past years when I was hauling mail. So. Does Jim Koenix up there, does he have, he runs all his under the road? He had started, he? yep. He had, I don't know if he was the first one that had requested one when they first started doing it to temporary close while they ran a hose across, but we've also told him that he can't be doing it. it was, I wasn't here when that happened, I was just yeah, going I mean, by memory or by what people have told me, but since then they have gotten utility permit requests to run a 12-inch pipe under the road, they'll bore it under the road or dig it in, and, and then they'll run their, their pipe that way from now on. I don't think it's a bad idea considering how much damage that equipment does to our roads. But no, it, it, it's a great idea to, to pump We it. do not have in this county a set policy, however. No, and that's what we're having the discussion for today is to uh, decide if we need a, something in writing, a policy, uh, something that says they have to have a permit or, or what. I don't know. We need a resolution or something to... Uh, I don't know. I guess I'll have to ask the, Mark to... The, the, Putting the pipe under the ground under the road is simple. That could be a utility permit. I mean, we have one of those. We don't technically have a written policy that says you cannot. I mean, obviously, it's not a safe thing to just run a, a hose across the road without no. closing a road or having permission to do so. 
Is it any safer to have the hose on the side of the road? Is that even legal? To put it... You have a 10-inch hose running on, on the secondary road? Is it on the shoulder? Or is well, it on what do you consider the shoulder on a gravel road? If it's on the gravel, it's on the road. That's what I'm asking. It's I mean, on, when I'm thinking it's on the gravel. Yeah. No, I wouldn't. We wouldn't allow them to put it on the shoulder. Well, they have been. Who has? Repeat, repeatedly. I don't know who We're, the company is that's okay. out of that hog, out of that confinement. Uh, Most people will run it in the ditch. They won't run alongside the road, and we haven't been aware of them doing that along the road. I have pictures of it laying right on the side of the road from that facility crossing Noble. I've got pictures of them coming north on Noble. Okay, we, we haven't been aware of that until this last time when they requested to run across the road. So, we need to, we probably... Well, these are the things that need to be addressed. You're right. Are, are we, are we going to allow these companies or, or these operations, even though it's a secondary road, to allow them to put this hose on the roadway. I don't agree with it, no. I think if, if we're going to allow them to do this, I mean, the ditch should be exactly. uh, substantial. Yep. And I, their responsibility. Now, believe me, I want to, I want to make clear my, to you that I agree with the, the, the pumping of it is a great deal because it, it does alleviate the destruction. Because they do, they yeah. they tear the roads up. That's something that should be addressed too. Why, even an implement, still, why why are we allowing this to happen? That, that equipment is huge, and you can't tell me that these bridges that they're crossing on these secondary roads, the signs are right there, are not even close to taking the weight restriction that's there. Yeah, you're. Right. I mean, and but my point is, is that these these people had a different option and we somebody here has allowed the use of the county signs now i might understand there was no fee involved with this either you just we had the signs we just said if you come <clears> get <throat> them and you erect them it didn't cost us anything right, Your signs are already owned we have them they so a, a private company came in and you allowed them to use county property for their personal gain basically but in your eyes you thought we're saving ourselves some money here because you try to work with the road. public with you know what's the cost of saying completely no okay. and then having to spend the money to you know it's almost no different than closing a road to and we, we've done it in the past too if, if a contractor doesn't have barricades when they put a tile crossing under the road we've got to allow a tile crossing under the road they'll close the road too and we'll provide the barricades for that and it's their personal gain, but we've still got to allow the access across the right of way. Some discussion earlier here. Now, you you stated that you allowed them to do this once. Right. Are, is this practice going to still continue? So, further road closures that's where, be coming. That's where we need to. That's where this whole policy has come up. Now, are we going to see more of this? That we <clears throat> can't get this. And this was last minute. I mean, our road foreman got on on a Friday. They wanted to do it on a Monday, and we're like, well, if you need to get it done, let's do it. But mm -hmm. We need to start, if we're going to see more of this, and, and I, I would love to see more of it, get them big tankers off the roads, but maybe the policy stands that if you want to do this, you need to plan a route, and at any crossing, you need to put a pipe in the ground exactly. to run your hose. Exactly. And nothing can be on the, nothing could, should be on the roadway. And, and we've had this issue before, and Kurt Yonker was called on this, if it wasn't last year, the year before, one of these operations left the hose on the road overnight. Hmm. Not crossing the road, on the road. That can't happen. That and, should and, not happen. And that's that's my point on this. This isn't the first time I've addressed this. This is the first time I've been made aware of it. I don't know how long ago it's well, been since you Well, I don't know what else. Either. That's why I'm here, because obviously my call to the Sheriff's Department is, is not effective in this matter, and that's why I called Bob on this matter. My, my biggest concern is, is that First of all, the signs were let out, there, and I understand your reasoning with that. But those, whoever that operation is, had a, a, another option, and they chose not to do it. There's a culvert. There's a culvert just a couple hundred feet of that intersection they could have crossed through. I wasn't aware of the culvert there. But, there, there is okay. a large culvert there. Okay. So, you know, these are the things that I'm upset about. First of all, the road closure for this reason, to me, is absurd. Second of all, like I said, and which I had to keep pursuing this, is that the road closure was only going to be temporary for a few hours. My and that's what we were made aware of, and obviously it wasn't. And 
how does that leave? Who's responsible? If somebody would have went through that barricade, who, who's at fault here? The, 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 your signs with no, with no beacons on them, no forewarning signs. During the day, you don't need the beacons. Now, they drug it out longer than we thought. I, I understand. understand that. So, but clearly... But it was a road closure. Now, it wasn't a... <laughs> what do you want to say, approved by the Board of Supervisors, there wasn't a whole lot of time to run that rigmarole, but they did have permission. And I don't know legally how that falls in, Mark. With well, let's just, and that's that's uh, why we're here today, to have a discussion on what needs to be done in the future. We can't change the past. Okay? Well, I was just going to say, let's take a, a, a ridiculous example. Let's say a road completely collapses. Okay? You don't have to come run into the Board of Supervisors and say, oh, can we put signs up? I mean, you put signs up. If somebody drives through the sign, it's their fault. You know, simple answer. So once you've made the decision as the county engineer to close the road, if somebody goes through those signs, it's their fault. However, we did not, there were not flashing lights on them, and I was not aware of that either. When it got dark, they should have had lights on them, and they didn't. I agree. And, and that was... And that's why I had the sheriff's department. I called the sheriff's department and said, you need to get a vehicle down there. With, once I with, got the phone its, call with its lights. Once I got the phone call, we, I, the road foreman came out there and shut them down. I mean, right. we had I to do that. that, and I appreciate that. So, but I guess just forward, what are we going to do? Yeah. Well, this is these are my points. If I can, real quick. First of all, are we going to continue to allow this to happen again? The intent is not to. Okay. The second thing that I think that needs to be addressed is these operations. Are we going to allow? As you said, it's, you shouldn't have, but are we going to allow that hose to be on the roadway? I wouldn't agree with that. Most guys that I've seen, and I've seen it travel in other parts of the state, they run them in the ditch. And that should be where they belong. They don't belong on the roadway. Right. They're a hazard. Exactly. That's, that's my point. Are we going to allow this? And, and to, to police it, are we going to have to have something set in, in, in it, to where a permit is required to to even do this? Well, do you want to, I mean, th that becomes the question. Do we need to, if, if they're going to put a utility in the roadway, a conduit, we'll call it, to run the hose through the road, do we also need to have a permit saying you're going to put a hose in the right-of-way temporarily? I don't think so. Because as long as they stay in the ditch, it's not typically a hazard. But it is a hazard when it's on when the road. When it's on the road, you're correct. And this, like and that said, can't happen. That's that's what I'm saying here. Yes. Is that, that's one of my biggest points. So no, what, I agree. What can, so what can we do legally? Well, here, here's the problem. What can we do? Legally? Here's the problem. Anything? Maybe nothing. You call up the sheriff and say, "Go out there and take the hose off. Get him to take the hose off the road." The sheriff says, "I'm not going to do it. We're done." What do we do? You should have the sheriff's department here. I mean. If we're going to be talking about this, the sheriff's department needs to be here. I mean, it's, it's like the steel wheel ordinance. You can pass all the ordinances you want. If it's not enforced. If, it's, it's, if they won't go out and write tickets, it doesn't do any good. I think it's odd, though, that, that you've seen them on the shoulder or on the edge of the road because I haven't. And I'm not saying that you oh. have. I mean, I'm not saying you well, haven't either. Obviously, and I've got pictures. That's of fine, and I don't think that's right. Even, they should... even this last one where they crossed the road, they, they came straight out of that facility, ran right down 410th, went across the road, and stayed on the road. See, and, that, I, and, and that's nearly a mile hose. Well, the, basically, though, outside of this incident, have we really had much problems with this in the past? I haven't been aware of it, but I think... But has anybody brought it up? Well, but if it... If nobody's bringing it up, so. it's obviously not a problem. Yeah, I mean, I've never heard of it before. Never. Yeah. This I mean, is the first time. To, that's why I think up at McIntyre, around the McIntyre area, there's a lot of CAFOs. And, uh, you know, Jim, Jim Koenig, the name comes up, and he has called me years ago already, you know, and asking if they could go through culverts and everything. And, and never, that's never had a complaint from in that whole area. So. But I don't agree with them laying it on the side of the road either. Well, I don't think that's a safe thing at all. For right now, I mean... You, you know, there's roads that have uh, 200 uh, traffic uh, vehicles a day or whatever uh, count. There's other roads that uh, we're lucky to have 10 vehicles a day and so on. Uh, I, I would just as soon have this go back to your office. It's your decision. I mean, you look at the, uh, you, you look at the, well, what the hell am I trying? The history of the road sure. and whatnot all, and make a decision by that. I mean, if it's a heavy traffic road, no, you, you absolutely don't want to have 
But if it's a very light traffic road, there's no neighbors that have any problems and this and that. I mean, I, I don't know that we have to make this thing more difficult than one of it. But we have been requiring, huh? Keep it in the ditch. I think it needs to number yes. one stay in the ditch. Number two, I think if they want to cross the road, they've got to bore but the that, cost of. But then, let that be your call, or like you say, if there is a thing for two, three hours, I mean, let it be your call. We kind of need to know they, when they're doing it because we don't always get those phone calls, and I don't know if I want to be called every time somebody wants to pump manure. But if there was something written that they all understood, this is how that needs to happen. I mean, granted, it's just a policy, but. Um, well, why don't you come up with policy in the next couple, two or three weeks and <laughs> well, we'll we'll take a look at it? Well, we can. I mean, we it's not going to be law enforcement to come over to at the same time. Get some boiler plate from some other county that's already done that work. And I can certainly do that. You know, I mean, whatever works and what's been working for them. But See, I don't any, want to... But, but I'd, like to, I'd like to add to this, too, if I can. You know, uh, stand... Uh, Asking, asking you to look into the road traffic and the number of vehicles, and it doesn't matter. It takes one, one person, one something to happen to one person. I don't care how many vehicles go down it. Two vehicles come across each other. They try to yield the right of way to each other, and there's a hose on the road impeding that tra and impeding their lane. You, you've got somebody else's property on, on that roadway, impeding that roadway. It takes one. I don't care if there's two people that go down that road a day or 200. It takes one incident. So why don't you look for some more uh, information on this, uh, uh, see if there's any other counties that have a policy of sort. Uh, and we'll... I certainly favor pumping it more than seeing those big wagons, and, and I and think I you'd agree. agree. I fully agree. I don't. You know, so. And we can get law enforcement over here maybe in the next two, three weeks. Well, I'll do some digging around and see if any other counties have policy. Yeah, because these, these buildings are going to be here for quite some time. They're going to be, the, you know, the problem's going to exist. they got to get rid of that liquid somewhere. And uh, So see what you come up with, Rich. And okay.